at the car on the farm and literally this pheasant is probably four meters in front of me we're now in the middle of february or towards the end of february <laughs> so he's uh he's nice and safe he's probably as soon as i get out of the car he's going to be up and gone anyway he's looking highly alert but you can guarantee if this was january he wouldn't be sat there or if he was <laughs> he wouldn't be sat there for long Right, afternoon everyone. I've just come down to the farm, do a bit of squirrel shooting hopefully. The season's over, predominantly during the season this is a, a duck shoot, a good duck shoot in Hampshire. After the season's finished it's, uh, it's predominantly a sheep farm. So we've come down today, see if we can get some corvids, some squirrels, maybe a pigeon. And yeah, have a bit of a look about really. But before I go anywhere I thought I'd have a quick look at what's in my kit bag, what I carry around, what I shoot, what I'm going to be shooting. Because one of these videos people always say what, what band are you using, what tape are you using, what cap are you using, what ammo are you using. So, Watch this bit and all will be revealed. Right, in my bag. I don't always carry a flask, but I always carry a drink. So I've got today with me a flask of Bovril. I always carry a couple of catapults. My main one I use is my Evo Field Pro. I've got 25, 17, one millimeter great white on there today. Um, both available in Caddyshack. Uh, that's the catapult and the band. So that's my Evo Field Pro, that's what I'll be shooting. Backup catapults, I always carry a couple. I've got my Evo Ergo Survivor and the Evo, Evo Ergo Forester. The Forester's got one millimeter band on it. The Survivor's got 0.85 millimeter band on it. So I've got two catapults there, banded up with two different bands. As backups, I've got my Thermal, good bit of kit when squirreling. <coughs> I've got a spare ribbon in case the wrap and tuck breaks. I've got spare ammo. So I've got 11 millimeter lead, 10 millimeter lead. I've got a knife sharpener, a little knife, a couple of bars of food. Uh, in the front, I've got my 11 millimeter steel here, which is quick access over my shoulder. I've also got 11 millimeter lead in my pocket. And then this one, I've got my Field Pro case inside of which I've got the variation of bands. So I've got 25, 17, one millimetre, 25, 17, 0.85. No, sorry, 25, 17, one millimetre, 25, 17, one millimetre for wrap and tuck. So they're both different lengths, obviously one for clip, one for wrap and tuck. I've got 25, 20, 0.85, both different lengths again, um, one for wrap and tuck and one for clips. So I've got a multitude of different bands in there. Um, nobody ever makes bands in the field. You're not gonna take band making kit out in the field. You just take a, a multitude of bands, what you're gonna need. I've also got my Torx key there for my Field Pro and I've got a spare key in there as well. So that's pretty much my kit bag. Um, yeah, run through it, I don't think I've forgotten anything. Obviously got my, my, oh, I've got my Priest. There you go, got my Priest as well just in case. So let's get all this pack back in, get this back over my shoulder and uh, have a walk through the wood and see if we can find something. got down to the duck pond there's a wounded duck on the pond I know he's wounded because the rest of them have flown off and this one's just left sat there so let's see if we can get on him I'm gonna take this one out so as you'll see I take the first shot as he makes his way to the left I give him a small amount of lead but on the report of the ban being released he stops in his tracks and I miss just in front just in front just in front. We're about 20 yards, if not a bit more. The next shot finds its mark perfectly, straight into the back of the duck's head. There you go. There you go. There we go. Right, I'm gonna walk around and get him. She might as well take the camera with me, I suppose. Let's take the camera with me. Oh, take it off the tripod. 
Right, let's take the camera around, go and pick this one up. Oh, quite thankful I missed the first shot, to be honest, because that way it's proof indeed that uh, it was a wounded bird, needed taken out. So I'm going to go around now, have a look, and uh, see what well, I know where I've shot him. I've shot him straight in the head, but see what was wrong with him, maybe if, if there is anything. Well, I say if there is, it's definitely something, but. Whew. Right, let's take a look. Hopefully you can see there's a hole just in the back of the head, obviously where you see it shot on the previous video, I hope. Hole in the back of the head. And did it come through? No, it hasn't come through, but, oh, but there, you can see that there is the ball there's the ball so a perfect amount of power hit in the back of the head go clean through the head and not quite break the, the skin the other side so that means the sort of full energy of the ball has been taken into the head of the bird rather than just clean pass through um, a, a clean pass through with 11 mil is not a bad thing anyway because of the size of the ball but it just means that you know everything's gone into that bird to dispatch it quickly it's actually in pretty good condition. And oh, there we go. There's why it wasn't flying off. We've got a broken wing. So it was a good bird to take out. Oh, hang about the ball's come through. Hang on, the ball is just literally falling through to this side. There. There we go. 11 millimeter steel. Well, that one won't go to waste, and that'll go in the pot. Yeah. Right, back to roughly where we started in the wood. I've walked it all the way through that way, walked back this way to the duck pond. We've just shot the, shot the duck on the pond. Uh, there's one point I want to make about this duck, is that this duck was, was an injured bird. So it was in pain, it had a broken wing. I knew it was injured, so I took it out. I know it's out of season, but first and foremost, what we need to think about is the animal's welfare. So having a duck on the pond, it's not far out of the season, it's still in fairly good condition now, but all it's going to do is deteriorate and die slowly so it's been taken out it's legal to take it out it's an injured bird its welfare is the uh, the most important thing so just want to clear that up really so now i've not seen a squirrel through there i've seen a few pigeons but they're so flighty you can't get anywhere near them for a shot the wood runs down this way so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have a brew i've got my uh, my oxo in here if i can get the lid off Got my oxo i'm gonna have a brew and then i'm gonna walk the wood through this way and hopefully uh we'll see a squirrel or two down there but for a minute i'm gonna sit here and enjoy this because this is a blast from the past from many years ago when i used to go out hunting and shooting with my dad so i'm gonna sit here and have a cup of bovril a damn hot bovril but damn good
Now, if you watch closely, you'll see the rabbit run past. There it goes, underneath the fallen down tree in the field behind. Rabbit. I could see it on the thermal. I could not see it with bare eyes. I saw it as clear as day on the thermal, but couldn't get in to get a shot at it. I've just seen it go out the other side of the bush. Damn it. So unfortunately after this point, the battery on the camera died. So I wasn't able to film a proper ending, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the film. Hopefully you can understand the reasonings for taking the duck out. Um, it's not something obviously I'd normally do, but the animal was uh, injured and so needed to be taken out. It was in its best interests. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you again soon.